Okay, next one we have y equals negative 2 cosine x. All right, so we're going to do the same procedure that we did for the previous problem when we had the sine graph. So again, I want to first fill out this information by using the formula. So amplitude is the absolute value of the number in front of the cosine. In this case, absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. So that answers that one. Your period, the formula is always 2 pi divided by the number in front of the x. In this case, number in front of the x is 1. So I have 2 pi divided by 1, and that's equal to uh, 2 pi. My phase shift would be the, the c value divided by the number in front of the x. The number in front of the x is 1, but my c value again here is 0 because I don't have any number that comes after the x. So because of that, my phase shift once again is going to be uh, 0. Okay, now if, I have, if my period is 2 pi and my phase shift is 0, that tells us that automatically we should have exactly the same key points that we had originally when our, for our sine graph and cosine graph is 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. That tells us that. Again, if we didn't know that though, we could always do this by quarter points, and I showed that before in the previous example with the sine graph. So we could do it that way, but again, you can, if you recognize that the, that the period is 2 pi and your phase shift is 0, then automatically we can just go right ahead and put down those same key points we had before uh, in, in initially. So I have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. These are all the original key points that I had before. The period is the distance from 0 to 2 pi. That length right there is 2 pi. That would be for one cycle. And for the graph that I have, I have a negative 2 here. So I have uh, 2 up here and I have negative 2 down below. Now if you look at the, the base graph we had before, the base graph for cosine kind of did something like this. The graph looked, uh, had, would drop down into a valley and then went back up again. Because I have a negative sign in front, refer, referring back to the transformations that you might have had in pre-calculus, what you would do is you would take this graph and you would flip it over the horizontal axis. So if that flips, the graph is actually going to look like this. It's going to be like a bell, bell shape there. It's going to be upside down. That's what it'll, what it'll do when I flip it. So that's what the graph has to look like here. Now, the easy way to remember where you start that off at is whatever number you see in front of the cosine, that's automatically where the graph is going to begin. If I see a positive 2, I would start the graph up here at positive 2. If it's negative 2, that means I'm starting the graph down below here. So I'm starting the graph there at negative 2. That's always what you do whenever you have a cosine graph. Now sine graphs always will start on the x-axis. If the sine graph is positive, you go up. If the sine graph is negative, then we're going to go down. So for cosine graphs, all you're going to do is just start it at whatever number you have in front. So because it's negative 2, we start automatically there at negative 2. Now next, what it'll do is it's going gonna, it's gonna to go to the x-axis, then it'll go up to the amplitude, back down to the x-axis again, and then back down now to the amplitude down below. So the graph itself is going to look just like this. Okay, again, it matches this dotted line here because, again, the graph is flipped over because of the negative. The negative is actually a flip. It's a type of transformation. So this would be your completed graph.